Hi, Woodchip Gardener. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to White Baby Gardening and Worm Farm q and Live. So today we are going to just be talking about our garden experiences that we've had, good and bad. What we did to overcome the challenges that we faced in the garden, what we plan to do differently. Just about anything you wish to discuss regarding your garden. And of course, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I will answer whatever questions I can. And if there are other participants on the live who knows the answer to your questions, then I hope that they will feel free to share. So how have you guys been doing? Sorry, I'm a bit behind. <laughs> I was having supper and realized I'm out of time. <laughs> right, so this year has been, well, I don't know if I could say unusual, but it has been a bit of a challenge for gardeners and farmers. First of all, the year started off, the growing season started off a bit slow because when we wanted warm weather, or at least when our garden season is supposed to start, we find that it was a bit too cold. So it was delayed. The time that we were able to start planting outdoors was delayed. So that was a challenge, one of the first challenges that a lot of us face. And then at the time when it's supposed to be cool weather or at least a reasonable weather we've experienced so much heat or what should i say heat wave or if it's that heat wave we've had to deal with excessive rain it has just been a rather crazy season for some of us it has been severe droughts that we have been experiencing so it has been a rather challenging year, but most of us are able to overcome it to some extent. Let's see. Uh, Woodchip Gardener says, good, rain coming back slowly. Yes, in my region, we started, well, I started everything indoors, thankfully, because if I hadn't done that, then definitely I would not have anything to harvest because we usually start the cool weather crop sometimes in May, early May, or some people start their cool weather crops outdoors as early as the latter part of April. But this year, and then the warm weather crop, you would start that, you'd make sure that you have it all in the ground by the first week in, the last week in May to the first week in June. This year has been so cold that even the second week in June, a lot of the crop we could not even put out because it was just too cold. We even got snow for the first time since I've been in Canada. We even got snow in June. I've never seen that before. But yeah, so it has been a bit of a challenge. Hi, Cece. Hi, Russell. Wonderful evening to you too. Yeah, so it has been a bit of a challenge and then after in my region we've had drought for practically the entire growing season now that the growing season is coming to an end guess what we're having rain <laughs> we were definitely not expecting that so i feel sorry for the farmers because now they're harvesting and most of our saskatchewan farmers tend to plant grains and when you're harvesting grains, you don't want rain because it can damage your harvest. So I feel sorry for them because we are having rain. We've been having rain for a few days now. Not a lot of rain today, yes, but I don't even know if I can call today's rain a lot. But given that we're having drought, what we're getting now is a lot of rain. And it's going to continue for the rest of the week. That is something I did not want because... Yes, it's good for my garden, but then my outdoor worm bin, I'm supposed to be harvesting it now. How do I harvest it if it is raining? But 
I guess that's all a part of life, hey? So what are some of the things that you appreciate about your garden this year? So my garden, for one, as most of you know, it has gone through quite a lot of trials from various types of pests, plant disease, drought, you name it, it has gone through quite a lot. And what I appreciate is that despite all of these things, the garden is still surviving. There are quite a few disappointments as well. But given all of what the garden went through, then definitely I cannot complain with how it is, how it is performing. So you guys don't have anything that you appreciate about your garden this year? How is your garden doing? Is it doing well? Did it suffer from drought? Did you suffer from too much rain? What's happening in your garden? Yeah, so one of the things that I appreciate about my garden, as I mentioned, given the trials that it endured, it is doing pretty well. But then some of my plants did exceptionally well, so I can't complain about that. My cherry tree did exceptionally well. My apples, it's the first year for one plant, one cherry, sorry, for one of my apple plants or tree. It's the first time it is producing and it is doing well. The others, the amount of apples that they produce is far more than they have ever done in previous years. So my apples and my cherries and my strawberries, those did very well this year. But it seems as if it is only the trees that are doing well, well, and the berries. And the only sad part of it, though, is that my... Cherries and my strawberries, practically all of it got eaten by the birds. <laughs> and then my Saskatoon berries, those got eaten by the birds. We didn't even get a chance to pick a handful. And trust me, when those Saskatoon berries are producing, they produce a lot. Practically as many leaves as are on the trees, that's as many berries that's usually on my Saskatoon berry plants. But this year, we didn't even get an handful out of it because the birds got it. <laughs> but I guess that's life. I'll have to find some way to overcome that, see if I can find a way to protect it from the birds. Yes, those magpies, they are the worst ever. This year, I don't know what it is about them, why they were so abundant in the garden. Noisy, destructive. So they were just abundant. But then, during the last month, I haven't really seen any of them, not even one. Don't know why, but I haven't seen any of them in the last month, which I'm grateful for because then now I'm able to at least get some strawberries, although I won't be able to get back my cherries. <laughs> Let's see. And why it says, my garden didn't do well either, but it is okay. Okay. Yeah, it's rather disappointing. Quite a lot of gardeners this year say that their garden have not been doing so well, whether it is too much heat or too much rain. Let's see what Chip Gardener says. My garden, it suffered from not enough nitrogen. Oh, so plants turned out my dino kale is 1.5 feet, but Paul's is 4 feet slower or lower, yellower. Okay. Wow, I didn't know they can go that tall. 4 feet. Interesting. That's a nice big plant. Yes. Um, so what have you done about it, um, Morgan? Were you able to give it more nitrogen? What did you use if you were able to? Let's see. And why it says, I had all sorts of pests this year. We had quite a lot of rain and wind. Not so good. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, we had quite a lot of wind too. It was a rather windy year for us. But then Saskatchewan is always windy, but this year it was quite windy. And with the heat and everything, well, um, um, I was a bit happy for the wind because at least it kind of helped to cool down the place a bit, but it was rather, rather windy. My corns, I'm a bit disappointed. For those that are in the raised beds, they, they are doing quite well for the most part. But the sad thing is that I did not have a lot of corn in there because, you know, the raised bed is only so big, so it can only hold so much plants. So they're doing well, but for the ones that are planted in the main garden, I think I'm going to be pretty disappointed with the most of them. But we'll see what happens with that. My squash, this year I have more squash producing than previous years, but then they're growing at such a slow rate. I'm not even sure what's going to happen with them. So I'm doing all I can, pruning the plants as much as I can to try and get as much as I can from it to ensure that at least the ones that are there on the plant will be able to reach maturity before the growing season fully ends. Hi, plant obsessed. <laughs> you finally caught a live stream. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so we're discussing how your garden did this year, what you appreciate about the garden and what disappointments you faced in the garden. Let's see. Morgan says, I use compost, but sparingly. In all honesty, I was expecting it to rain more and then for the wood chips to break down, thus giving it nitrogen more. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I have the opposite problem <laughs> to you, Morgan, because I had too much nitrogen in my garden. Well, too much compost because I put way, way, way too much compost in the garden over the fall last year. So I ended up with my plants, the first set of plants that I planted out, I end up with them being burnt because they were over fertilized. So I have the opposite problem to you. Thankfully, I had more seedlings, so I was able to replant the garden. But then some of them, I didn't have more of the plants, so I end up not having them. But yes, so this year I won't be putting any compost in the garden over the fall. I will just have worm castings and compost next year. And this time I won't be adding as much as I did because last year in the fall, I had about six inches of compost and really your plants don't need more than two inches of compost. So yeah, your garden don't need more than two or so inches of compost. So I overdid it <laughs> and I paid the price. <laughs> Which is too bad because um, with all the other problems that came after, it's just it was just too much for the garden, but it is still holding on, trying to do its thing. So I guess I can't complain too much. Let's see, Russell says, my garden is suffering because of lack, lack of cats. Finding a lot of tomatoes two to three feet away from plants with bites marking them. Oh. Wow. Squirrels and chipmunks, rabbits eat right on the vine. Oh, rabbits eat tomatoes? I did not know that. Yeah. So what are you Do you have cats at home or how do you control that? Yeah, I don't, um, I didn't know that the rabbits would eat the tomatoes. I know they eat the leafy vegetable. The plant does not lack calcium. Does not lack calcium because between the worm castings and the amount of having the worm castings, plus I keep adding milk and whatever oil calcium-based product I have to the plant. But I'm thinking maybe even though I'm watering the plants daily because it is so dry. Because as soon as you water, pretty much you go back in a couple of hours and it is all dry again. So 
I'm thinking that maybe the plants didn't have enough water for the plant to be able to absorb the calcium from the soil. And even in one of my self-wicking buckets and rot. Yes, yeah, so I'm trying to give them overcome that. But for the most part, the rest of the tomato plants are doing okay. Let's see, plant versus we had a lot more than almost rotted all of your onions, which is good. Raised the tomatoes. The birds seem to be a lot of problems this year. I don't usually have problems with the birds apart from this year. Apart, well, for my Saskatoon berries, I always have problems with the birds, but for my other plants, I don't usually have problems until this year when the magpie population increased so much. Then they wreak havoc on my garden and then they took themselves away. My peppers, let's see, my scotch bonnet peppers, they are a big disappointment, but I can understand why they didn't do well this year. And I started them early. I started some of them, I started them January. Some of them, I started them around March. And so far, I've only harvested two scotch bonnet out of four scotch bonnet pepper plants. Um, one has another scotch bonnet on it, but the rest don't have anything. They're flowering occasionally, but then that's as far as it goes. It doesn't really have a lot of flower on them. They're not growing in size. Well, they grow to a point and then they stop growing, but they suffered from fungus knots eating the root of the plants while they were indoors. And then when I transplanted them outdoors, the damage was bad from the fungus knots. So they practically did almost died. So when I put them outdoors, they start to rebound a bit, but it took them forever. But then because I had the issue with the leaf uppers and the curly top virus that they spread to the peppers. So because of that, the peppers are not doing well. My balm chili, I only have two plants because the rest of the seeds did not germinate. They got started, all my peppers got started in March, apart from the scotch bonnet. But although I started them in March, which means that they sh I should have been harvesting from them months ago, even like July, I have not been able to harvest even one. They're all very small, like just about an inch. They're just starting to produce, but then all of my plants, I noticed that they are taking forever to produce. And, they're, and when they do produce, they're not producing the way they usually do because of the various pests and the curly top virus that they've had. Thankfully, though, I was able to save the plants by using the worm castings. So it kind of helped to control the curly top virus to an extent. So at least I'll be able to harvest some things. For my sweet peppers, they are just starting to produce. Some of them have maybe, what is that, a table tennis size pepper on them. That's as far as it goes, nothing bigger than that. But for plants that were planted so early in the season, it is a bit, a bit or a big disappointment, but at least they're still trying to produce, so it's not too bad. I'm just hoping that at least the growing season will be long enough so that I have so that I have time to harvest at least some of them. For the balm chilies, I'm going to be taking one of the plants indoors and overwintering it because I don't really intend to buy any more of the seeds. And I would like to have seeds, so I'm going to be taking one of the plants inside and overwinter it. If it doesn't survive or produce indoors, then of course I'll have to buy seeds because I'm searching, still searching for that chili pepper that we had when we were growing up. 
I'm not sure what type of chili it was. I just know it by the look and the flavor of it. So I'm hoping that the balm chili that I have is the one I'm looking for. So that is why I'm going to be overwintering it. Usually, um, when I planned, started these plants, my intention was to overwinter all of my peppers. Not the sweet peppers, but my, my scotch bonnet and my balm chili bud and my herbs. But with the curly top virus that cannot be cured, I'm thinking that I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be overwintering them. But for the balm chili, I will try. Let's see, Russ says, oh, he's saying hello to Plant Obsessed. My main bed is three feet off the ground. Ooh, that's high. They jump right up in there. Really? Wow. Wow. I do have a fence around the peppers in that bed. They are safe. Rabbits eat the super sauce tomatoes. Wow. Yeah, so at least you have fence around the peppers so that they are safe. I didn't know the rabbits could jump that high. So I'm here thinking that my little bed, raised beds that are less than two feet off the ground, 20 inches, I think, 18 to 20 inches off the ground. And I'm here thinking that they are safe from the rabbits. <laughs> oh, Lord. Let's see. And when it says my scotch bonnet peppers did not produce anything, I'll overwinter them and my sweet peppers only just started producing. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that, my dear. Yeah, so I'm gonna be starting my scotch bonnet from from seeds early next year again. So I'm not going to be bringing them indoors to overwinter because the they were damaged by the fungus knots major damage and then they had to deal with the curly top virus the curly top virus has no cure the seeds if it produced would be fine it does not the curly top virus does not affect the seeds but the plant won't be producing the way it should with all the damages that it has sustained so it doesn't make sense to overwinter them it would be just a waste of time and energy and especially since i would have to be using grow lights to overwinter them then it does not really make much sense let's see rosa says i call the super sauce tomatoes the mangoes they are smaller same shape oh, okay let's see a plant of says russell you have more athletic rabbits than I do, but they are outside cats here. Okay. Yeah, we don't have a lot of cats going around here because if you see cats going around, then someone will call pest control and take the cats away. And if it is your cat, then you have to pay a fine to get it back. So for the most part, you don't see. Occasionally, you will see a cat roaming about, but you don't really see cats here outdoors a lot. Hi, Melanie. How have you been? Yeah, we're talking about how our gardens are doing this year, some of the challenges that we face, some of the successive successes that we've had, and how we overcome the challenge if we did and what we plan to do the following year to try to prevent these problems if possible let's see and why it says my shop bar tomatoes are doing somewhat great okay well um all of my tomato this year are either store-bought or they are i bought them as seedlings from the garden center um i'm very disappointed with them because i wanted seeds 
but I was looking for indeterminate seeds. I wasn't able to find any in my region for the first time because they're usually always available. But I wasn't, well, available in small amount, but I wasn't able to find any. I don't like to grow the bushy type of tomatoes, but unfortunately, all the tomatoes that I have are, they are the bushy variety. Let's see. Plant Obsessed says, my Anaheim pepper that is five year old is doing great. And the other peppers that started this year are all waterlogged. Skinny plants and little pepper. Oh, is that from, is, are they waterlogged from a lot of rain? Yeah, it's good to know though that at least the five-year-old plant is doing well. Um, do you keep that five-year-old plant outdoors or is it that you overwinter them, overwinter it each year? Hi, Helpy. Uh, let's see, plant verse, plant obsessed. Ask, does anyone grow grape? Yes, I do grow grapes. Not the best type of grapes, but um, in Saskatchewan, a lot of things don't grow well here. And so to grow grapes, it has to be several different varieties that we can grow here. They have seeds in them and they are tiny, like a blueberry size, a small blueberry, yes. So that's the only type of grapes that we actually have that we can grow here. And we can grow, there's the red ones and there are the white ones, but well, white, green. <laughs> yes, but um, those are the only grapes we can grow here. I have grapes this year. Last year I had a nice crop. The year before that I had a really nice crop. This year it's kind of wishy-washy. Yeah, it's not... It didn't flower a lot, and we have a few grapes on there. Speaking of which, I need to go harvest some of that too, because they're ripening now. Yes. Let's see. Melanie said the birds are picking at her tomatoes too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thankfully, the mud pies are gone, because I know they would definitely be picking up my apples and my tomatoes if they were here, but they decided to leave for whatever reason good riddance to them <laughs> yes i don't mind the other birds because i don't really have problem with them in my garden as far as i know apart from my saskatoon berries but yeah i'm glad they are gone okay so plant obsesses yes lots of rain oh i overwinter all of my hot peppers in the basement with my worms Okay, nice, nice. Yeah. I, will, um, I think if I'm overwintering any plants this year, I might do so in my garage instead of indoors. We'll see. But I won't be overwintering a lot of plants because practically all my plants are suffering from the curly top virus. My herbs, some of them aren't suffering from that, so I will overwinter those. So we'll see how that goes. Let's see. Melanie says, my one and only scotch bonnet pepper that made it is not doing well at all. No pepper. Yes, I'm experiencing the same thing, my dear. They're, they're not producing any peppers at all i don't know if i don't know what the case is i know that for mine it has quite a lot of issues with different type of diseases and pests so that i'm thinking is the reason why they aren't doing well but it is sad because i was so looking forward to having all of those trees producing because i could always freeze the peppers and then i would have scotch bunny to get because here you don't really get scotch bonnet quite often. I think there is only two stores or maybe occasionally I hear of one of the regular supermarkets here that may have scotch bonnet from time to time. 
but for those two stores that carry scotch bonnet it is only when they get supplies because the supplies usually comes from jamaica or somewhere out of town yeah so we have to wait for them to get supplies which is not very often yeah so i was hoping that i would have a lot of scotch bonnet this year but i'll try again next year i still have quite a bit of seeds so we'll see hopefully it will do a lot better let's see and white says i had leaf miners leaf hoppers white flies aphids caterpillars and caterpillars destroyed my garden wow quite a lot of them eh? at the moment my tomato plants have brown stem disease oh that's sad this is due to the weather we are having yeah well i've had pretty much all of those apart from the aphids i've had all of those issues as well yeah i didn't have any problem with aphids thankfully but i've had white flies i've had leaf miners leaf hoppers cut worms i've had caterpillars of all sorts i've had so many things in the garden some of them i don't even know what they are i only know that they are there yes but the plants although they suffered so much they're still not doing bad they, it could have been a lot worse let's see and white says our grapes didn't do well either due to the weather as well melanie says han white you have them all okay yes see plant obsessed says the plant the grape plant is too happy growing up my house not too many grapes okay it's focusing on growth at the moment do you prune your grapes i haven't pruned mine i didn't prune mine this year well i've never pruned my grapes really but i did plan to prune it this year but then so many things keep going wrong that i just couldn't find the time to get it done but hopefully i'll be able to do so either at the end of the growing season or early spring see melanie says but i have 12 chili plants ooh, ooh, nice and they are loaded oh that's great that's wonderful <laughs> and why it says the same with our grapes plant obsessed yes it's wonderful indeed oh you prune yours four times a year it is not enough this year whoa what are you feeding it that it is growing at such a rate that you have to be pruning it so often <laughs> must be loving all that worm casting and whatever else you're giving it eh yeah another disappointment for me this year is my lettuce hi corzer see hello from the uk i love your worm videos what type of worms do you keep and are there any you still want to get well i have um my main worms are my red wigglers i just started out with the european night crawlers last year as for worms that i would like to get i would love to try raising the blue worms and the african night crawlers but unfortunately saskatchewan won't won't sustain them unless i can grow them indoors and so far i'm raising my worms in my heated garage but it is the door needs to be changed and the heating needs to be redone to ensure that it is circulated around the entire garage so i'm not sure i don't think i would be able to grow the blue worms and african night crawlers until that is done and then i know that i would have to keep them in the garage all year round well i could put them out in the summer but i definitely for the most part they would be in the garage so I would love to try the African night crawlers and the blue worms, but we'll see. Maybe with time. And thank you, by the way, for liking my videos. 
<laughs> okay, Melanie says last year she had a lot of a lot of um a lot of grapes, but not this year. Yeah, too bad. Okay, you like pl um, plant obsessed videos too. Good. They get up on 200, 200 worm poop. <laughs> that is all. Okay. 200 watt liters, 200 gallons, 200 watt ounces. Obsesses, thank you. And White says, Is that wise to prune it so often? Plant obsessed? Well, I can't really answer that question. Plant obsessed will answer it for you. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Um, Russell says, I have two grape vine, haven't had grapes in years. They have to regrow each spring. The rabbits chew them down to the base. Oh, those rabbits, you're having a hard time with those guys. Maybe this fall I can install a new fence. Yes, that would be great because you seem to be having a really hard time with those rabbits. Thankfully, I didn't see a lot of rabbits this year. In fact, early in the season, before I even had anything worth their attention i see them a few of them going through the yard or at least one of them come from time to time but they haven't been in my garden this year so i'm pretty thankful for that last year they decimated my um my beets i could not get anything i couldn't get any foliage from the beets last year because they were just all over it but this year i didn't see them but then maybe the one that was eating my beets was the one that died last year. Because I found a dead rabbit in my yard. And that one, he's always coming to visit. Stay a distance from me, but he will stay in the yard. Yeah, so I don't know if it is since he's gone that I'm not seeing any damage from my plants. Let's see. And why it says last year our grapes did an amazing job. Well, that's good. That's great. Persa says, thank you. I've always wanted African night, night crawlers. For eight years I tried, but nobody will ship to Europe. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, shipping sometimes can take a really long time, depending on where, especially if you're sending it from somewhere far away. And then the thing is, you have to be careful when you ship worms, the type of worms you're shipping, unless you have some special way to protect them. Because some worms like the heat, although they can't stand too much of the heat. Some worms like the cooler weather, so you have to be careful for worms that love the cooler weather. You don't want to ship them in a very hot climate and vice versa. So yes, one has to be careful with that. But so were you able to get the African night crawlers eventually? Does Uncle Jim, Uncle Jim seem to be very popular with a diversity of worms. Does he sell um, African night crawlers and do you think you could possibly get some from him? Okay, 200 pounds, okay. I've never weighed my castings. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how much my casting weighs. I always go by the gallon.
sorry about that um just have to respond to this message yeah let's see blood obsesses and white it was only twice a year usually this year i am trying to keep it off the house and electrical wires as far as i can tell they grow a foot a day wow <laughs> you might want to cut back on how much you're feeding them okay sometimes if you overfeed your plants although the, the casting won't burn the plant but sometimes if you overfeed the plant it can produce too much foliage and once the plant is in that process where it is producing foliage then it won't <coughs> divert the nutrients towards producing fruit so sometimes it might be a good idea to cut back on the amount of food that you're giving the plants but then everything works in a cycle plants have their years when they will there's always that year when they do excessively well other years they will do well <clears throat> and then you will have a year when they just don't do well at all so it is always a cycle so yeah maybe this is just one of those years when it will not do well see okay Teresa says Forza says no I think there is a law against importing them now oh is there hmm I know there are laws here in Canada about importing worms but I'm not sure which worm it is because people tell me about it but I keep asking around and nobody can tell me what worm it is so I was thinking that maybe based on the description of the damages that the worms cause, I'm thinking that it might be the um, Alabama jumping worm. That's my thought on it, but I'm not sure what worm it is that we're not allowed to import because they say it, the problem with it is that it is producing too much organic matter so maybe not the alabama jumping worm come to think of it because they're saying it is producing too much organic matter for plants that actually do not like to have a lot of organic matter and so those plants in those areas died off because of these worms that were imported years ago i'm not sure how long ago that was I would like to get more information on that, but I don't know where to turn to get that information because it would be good to have it verified. Let's see, Melanie says, my grapevines leaves have a lot of warts on them. Anyone know how to get rid of it? Mm, no, I do not. I know that my grapes suffered from the curly top virus this year. Unfortunately, I don't know what's going to happen with it next year, given that the curly top virus cannot be cured. But I'm hoping that because it shed its leaf and stuff like that, then maybe it will regrow without the issue, without an issue next year. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know what the warts are or what caused it or how to get rid of it. Let's see, plant obsesses, vermibug in Italy has A and C. I wonder where he got his, okay. Yeah, maybe you can look him up and see if you can get some from him. But then you said there might be some laws about importing them, okay. Well, um, I guess you'll have to try to see if there's anyone in your region that actually have these african night crawlers um if i see any of my viewers who raise worms if any of them 
in Europe has any of the ANCs, I will let you know. Maybe you can source it from them. Okay, you want to find someone who is willing to ship the cocoons. Let's see. Plant upstairs says, Melanie, I have never seen warts on grapes. Do you know what Bob caused it? Yeah, I, um, Melanie, if you find out what's, what's causing it, then please let us know eventually, because it would be good to know. Rosa says, I got tired with chopping them this summer. I can't kill them. I am not that hungry. <laughs> I was driving them across the river and over the bridge every day. I opened and set the trap yesterday. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of work. It might it might work out a lot easier for you to just put up the fencing. No fencing can be costly depending on how much you need to put up. But yeah, I guess it would be definitely worth the effort. Let's see. Corsa says, I have lots of heated fish slash shrimps breeding tanks and the temperature would be okay for a and c nice i keep some of my worms in the house yeah yes i have um my worm bins are in the garage but i do try to keep one container with a pound of worms in it at all times in the house just in case something should happen to my worms outdoor then i won't have to go and source worms from somewhere else at least i would have some worms to rebuild the worm population because um even last year's experience with my worm bins 12 of them freezing over well that's not last year that was in february this year yes 12 of them froze in february and if that was all the worms i had then at least the pound of worm that I have indoors would have been enough to help me rebuild the population. So, yes, I keep a pound of worms indoors for that reason. I used to have all the worms indoors, but then the first for the first year that I started raising them, but didn't fully understand how to care for the bin to prevent food flies and all those issues. So they ended up ended up being outdoors in the garage. See, plant obsesses, the apples are doing great here this year. Mine too, they are just doing so well. The plant that is always producing from the day we from the year we bought it until now. It is so loaded. Um I should have taken off more of the apples off it, but I didn't. And it's just loaded with apples, but the wind took off most of the apples now. But they were ready for harvesting anyway, so it's okay. Let's see. Plant Obsess says, people are freaking out here in the States about Alabama jumping worm. Yes, those, those worms are just terrible based on what I've heard and the damages that they cause. So, yeah. But then there are still people who are raising them as composting worms because of how ferociously they eat. So there are still people raising them as composting worms, but that's not something that I would do because if they're going to be causing more harm than good to the population, then it does not make sense. And then the Alabama jumping worm is different from other composting worms in that you need to have two worms in order for worms to reproduce. But with the Alabama jumping worms, that's not the case. Just one worm egg, just one worm, one worm can reproduce it doesn't need a partner to reproduce so if you have that one alabama jumping worm or one of its eggs then you know that in no time you can have an invasion of them so it's not worth the effort to raise them at all let's see 
There I go. <laughs> Corza says, yes, it is good they try to stop invasive species, I guess. But for worm enthusiasts, it's sad. Well, given that there are so many worms, so many composting worms that we can use to compost, it doesn't really matter if there are one and two that we cannot come um, raise because, I mean, there are still options. It's not as if when a few of them get banned, then we don't have other options. So for that reason, I guess I won't complain. Let's see. Melanie says, plant up says it is not from an insect. The leaves itself just get lumpy. I'm trying to remember if my grapes didn't have that issue one year. I do believe one year my grapes, but it wasn't it wasn't bad. But I do believe my grapes had that issue one year. And some other trees that were around me had that issue one year, but I haven't seen it since. And at that point in time, when I saw it, I didn't do anything about it. Yeah. Oh, I think at that, that year, though, we had some issues with some caterpillars that were on the Dutch elm trees. I don't know what type of caterpillar they were, but... They were just all over Saskatchewan that year, the caterpillars. I don't know what type of caterpillars they were, but they were just everywhere. They were like a really nuisance where you can't walk without one falling on you. And stuff. it was just, just an invasion of them that year. But I haven't seen them since. Well, I saw a few of the caterpillars the following year, but I haven't seen them since. Russell says, if I did not have the ANC, I would have to punch a time clock. Let's see, Russell says, that is strange. The Department of National Resources recommends anglers use ANC because they are not invasive. They die and their cocoons do not hatch after winter. Oh, at least in my state. Oh. Interesting fact. I didn't even know that. that okay. Well, it makes sense because, I mean, canine crawlers are heat-loving worms, so it makes sense that their cocoons would not survive the winter. Yeah. And well, that's good to know because if I ever get my garage warm enough, and decide to raise them, I'd have to make sure that they are closest to the furnace so that they don't get cold, especially the cocoons. But I guess they would reproduce very slowly, even that my regular worms do reproduce slowly in my garage as it is now. Let's see. Corza says, I started keeping and breeding worms for fishing over 10 years ago. But as I got older, I am more interested in the composting and the benefits for my garden. And I can't bring myself to sell them as bait now. <laughs> uh, oh dear. <laughs> uh, you sound like my sister, like Anne White. She cannot see herself selling her worms for for people to use as bait. She feels sorry for the worms. <laughs> uh, says, yes, I am in Europe. The laws got really tight here. We even need plant passport to sell aquatic plants. Well, it sounds like Saskatchewan. There are so many things you have to get permit for. It is crazy. If I go fishing and I'm transporting my fish, I have to make sure they're dead. I cannot transport them alive. You cannot transport anything that any livestock. Apart from if you go to the pet store and buy pets, then that is different. 
but no livestock you cannot transport without having a permit. Everything is regulated. Not sure why, but everything is regulated. Let's see. Um, Melanie says she will send a photo. Okay. <laughs> yes, a planned passport. Yes, that's how it is here in Saskatchewan as well. Um, there's just permits for every single thing. Everything is regulated. I'm hearing myself in the background. I'm wondering what is that? Why am I hearing myself in the background? Are you watching my live child? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so what plants have you had the most success with this year in your garden? Oh, my sweet potatoes, I haven't tried them yet. I think by now my Japanese yam, the purple one, should be ready for harvesting. I don't really know what you look for <laughs> to know whether or not they're ready for harvesting. I don't know if the plant died back or anything like that because I haven't grown sweet potatoes since I was a kid. So I don't remember anything about how, how you know when to harvest it whether it is based on the amount of time that has passed after you planted it or what but based on what i saw when i transplanted these purple japanese yam for the first time then i'm assuming that my they should be ready for harvesting by now because when i started them indoors i started them four months before i transplanted them outdoors but then for the ones that was planted four months in advance, when I was transplanting them, some of them actually started producing at that point in time. So I'm figuring four months, plus it's been three months since I transplanted them. So they should be ready for harvesting now. My sweet potatoes, I started those in November and I've been taking clippings for cuttings from them after. So some of them might not be that old, but I'm thinking by now they should be ready for harvesting. So I'm going to be testing those out pretty soon. Yes, as soon as maybe next week, maybe this week, depending on how rainy it is. But it would be nice to see what's going on with that. Let's see, Amai says, they might have disease, so they have to make, sh so they have to make sure it needs to be regulated. Well, I don't, I guess that makes sense. That makes sense. But the thing is that they are not for the, for the um, livestock that you transport here. They're not doing any tests on it. They're not doing any tests to see if it has, if it has disease. As far as I know, the, um, there's no test being done to figure out whether they have disease. Of course, I've never really gone through the full process of depending on the livestock anyway. So I guess I'm no authority on that. But as far as I know, if I go and buy fish from somewhere else, livestock to bring here, I don't know if maybe they regularly test the fish farm to see if their fish is healthy or not. Possibly, possibly. Yeah, so I guess I'm no authority on that. But it makes sense that... Um, they would regulate it to control diseases. See, plant obsesses, early season beets, turnips, and radish did better than the rest. Okay, nice. Let's see. Learn English at home says they can be stolen too. Yeah, that makes sense too. Let's see, Melanie says tomatoes, corns, cucumbers, cabbages, potatoes, and all the little things in between. Can't wait to harvest the sweet potatoes. Um, okay, so you're asking when will I do the potato reveal video? Are you talking about the potatoes or the sweet potatoes? 
my potato video i did it last week but i haven't uploaded it yet when i was going away on my trip i edited it edited it <laughs> yes i edited it um i intended to upload it while my trip but then i realized that where i went i was way up in the bush so they didn't have any cell any um internet coverage so i wasn't able to upload any videos yes and that is why you didn't hear from me so i apologize for those who were looking forward to my videos and the lives and i wasn't available just because i didn't have internet where i went so i couldn't even get in touch with you guys to tell you what was going on yes so um i'm going to be uploading it sometime during the course of the week yes so maybe depending on how the day goes today i might upload it for tomorrow I've harvested most of my potatoes so far, but I still have some to go. But I'm giving those more time because they haven't, some of them start dying back, some haven't yet. Let's see. Rosa says, if you really want AMC, I will send you some when you are ready. I would want to get them in the mail before October. Okay. Okay. Oh, that would be nice. Yes. Um, that would be nice, but um, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I am kind of behind with the things that I need to get done. I haven't touched anything in my garage in the apart from whatever little I can do for my worms in the last two months because of my hand. So... I haven't started securing the garage to make it warm enough for the worms yet. I just started harvesting even the worms from outdoors, something that should have been completed by the end of this month. But yes, I would really appreciate that. So I'm gonna see. Yeah, I'm gonna see if maybe I can get someone to help me with um, with that to get into the garage door insulated so that i can at least because that would be nice to have those ancs that would be nice oh a few pounds and you will pay for shipping oh my goodness you are so kind <laughs> i will email you sometime soon oh that is so nice of you <laughs> oh yeah you know what um I can keep them indoors until I get the garage up and running. I can keep them indoors. That would be so nice. I'm excited. <laughs> yes, because I've always wanted to have them to see how they perform, be able to compare them with the other worms. So that would be nice. Oh my goodness, I'm getting so excited already. <laughs> yes, I would definitely appreciate that. Yeah, so um, Rosa said, whoa, I'm excited for you too. Nice, Russell. Yeah. So that is what's going on in my garden. Um, I'm not really expecting a large harvest this year. I think this year, well, I'm growing more things this year than my previous years. But I think this year my harvest is going to be less than previous years because of all the issues that i've had my tomato harvest is definitely going to be less but and my corn is definitely going to be less but at least i'm still harvesting so i'm not going to complain too much all of these things are expected during the last day so can't complain too much let's see melanie says i did three sets of potato harvest Ooh, and i still have one more to do in september Sweet potato harvest will be in September as well. Nice. Yeah. So, Pity, we won't be able to see your sweet potato harvest, but I guess you can tell us how it goes, eh? Yeah. I don't usually weigh my harvest, but I think for my sweet potatoes, I'm definitely going to be weighing them. I'm talking as if I'm sure I'm going to be harvesting. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not even sure if they're produced, so I don't even know if I'm going to be harvesting, but I guess we will see. Yeah, 
Um, so I've been itching to harvest the sweet potatoes or at least to dig up a few of them from July, even though I only transplanted them out in the first week or second week in June. But I've been itching just to just to move the dirt away to see what's going on because I'm really expecting to have even some to harvest. Yeah, so we'll see how it goes. I will definitely make sure that I keep you guys posted as to what's going on with that. Yeah, because I tried growing the sweet potatoes last year, but they didn't turn out well. Mostly, one, I think I started them too late because I planted them the last week in May. But sweet potatoes need at least six months, depending on the variety that you're growing. They need at least six months to grow. So I planted them too late. And then I had so much issue with the aphids last year. They just decimated the poor sweet potato plants. But based on how the plants are looking this year, I think it should be okay. I'm hoping, though, that maybe... The plants are not just producing a lot of foliage and no produce. Let's see. Am I the only one who scratched to see if there is any potato? <laughs> ah, you sound like what I want to do with my sweet potato. Well, this year I planted far more potatoes than usual. Yes, I usually have just one raised, one small raised bed, two feet by three feet. And that would be all the potatoes that I planted. But this year, I think I have maybe three times that amount. No, I think I have about four times that amount in potatoes. And this year, my potatoes did a lot better than all my previous years of growing potatoes. So... I'm pretty excited, so I think I'm going to try and upload a video either today or tomorrow so you can see how it is. But no, I didn't. I've never really scratched the root to see how they are doing. Well, I did that just before I harvested these potatoes now, but it's only to be sure that I can go ahead and harvest it. But I don't usually, I think I did that a few years ago when I planted potatoes. For the first time, I did scratch around to see what's going on. I was rather disappointed and the harvest was disappointing, but yeah. <laughs> for my sweet potatoes, I'm really tempted to do that. Okay, so we're going to be closing down the live in a few minutes. <laughs> when Anya says I always cheat. <laughs> yeah. For the things that grow, uh, for the root vegetables, I uh, don't really try to see what's there, but for anything else that produce above ground, I'm always going and looking at them, look bending down, lifting up the leaves, looking underneath them, whatever it takes to see if there's any flowering going on or if there's any fruits being produced. I'm always curious about that. Let's see. Russell says, I harvested half my potatoes in the last week. Maybe tonight. If not tomorrow, I will finish the other half. Nice. I want to see white baby sweet potato. If it works, I do next. Okay, next year. Okay. Yeah. I'm, hope I'm hoping that it works. Yeah. And I started these sweet potatoes for the most part. Most of them I started from the sweet potato skin. And then some of them, the latter set that I have, I started by putting the sweet potato in water and let it sprout. But most of them comes from slip. Not from slip, but from the skin of the, the sweet potato. So it will be interesting to see what happens. Yes. I don't know, talking about the sweet potato, I'm itching to go out there and start digging. <laughs> I'm itching to go and start digging, especially for the 
the purple yam, I'm expecting, definitely expecting that to produce, but I'm not so sure. And I guess the only reason why I'm expecting the purple yam is because the ones that I started four months ago when I was transplanting it, some of them had sweet potatoes on them already. But it will be interesting to see what happens. I will definitely keep you guys posted. So how long of a growing season do you guys have leave for this year? I don't have much time. In fact, oh, I'm going to have to cover my sweet potatoes tomorrow because the temperature is going to go down to five degrees overnight. And the sweet potatoes don't like temperatures below 10 degrees. 10 degrees it doesn't like either, but at least it can survive that. But tomorrow the temperature is going to be five degrees, which is why I need to get my worms indoors. But yeah, I think I need to jot that down so I don't forget. Let's see. And where it says she has a month, hopefully. Okay. And Melanie says, I'm good until October 25th, first frost. Oh, nice. We got quite a bit of time left. Eh? We started so early compared to us, and we are still going even two months later. That's nice. I'm jealous. <laughs> Let's see. Um, and why it says UK weather is unpredictable, so fingers crossed. Okay. Yeah, I noticed that my trees, um, I was quite excited last week because I was looking at the trees and usually around the second week in August, you would start to see the leaves, some of the leaves starting to turn yellow. But then last week I looked outdoors and I didn't see any leaf turning yellow, so I was quite excited. Oh yes, maybe we might have a little bit of an extension. But then I look outdoors this week and quite a few leaves are starting to turn yellow. So I'm like, oh no. <laughs> yeah, so I guess it's time to wrap it up. I'm just hoping that it will give me a little bit of time because I really want to harvest some of my sweet potatoes. Not sweet potatoes. The um, sweet peppers. I really want to harvest some of my sweet peppers because usually I have like one or two plants. This year I have quite a few of them and I would like to be able to harvest something because I've never ever been able to harvest any sweet pepper. Last year I came close to harvesting a few, but then we had that frost the first week in August and it killed the pepper plant. So... I'm hoping that this year for the first time I'll be able to harvest but everything is producing so late because I started everything indoors so I should have been able to harvest things from early from late July to early August I should be able to harvest things from then but I haven't been able to harvest any of my fruits yet well a few tomatoes but that's it <laughs> well anyway I guess that is that yeah let's see Russell says i am hoping another month usually second week in september and it's over yeah mine will definitely be over by then too yeah but at least um so i'm gonna have to be preparing my pots now to start over for those things those few things that i'm going to be over wintering and some of them i'm not really going to overwinter i just want to because of the curly top virus i won't really overwinter them but some of them i will bring indoors just to bring the fruits to maturity 
Yeah, and then I'll discard of them because if they have the curly tap virus, it doesn't make sense to keep them around because they are not producing the way they should. So I don't expect that is going to change if I overwinter them for next year. So I'll just get rid of them. Yeah, so anyway, guys, it was lovely talking with you. It was fun. And I hope that I will see you again on Friday, all being well. Well, I'm not sure what is going to happen for Friday. I want to have the live, but on Wednesday, I'm going to be going to the doctor to see what's going on with my finger. I don't know if I'm going to be keeping the finger or if I'm going to lose the finger. So depending on what's, what happens, then that will determine whether or not I have the live on Friday. But anyway it was fun talking with you guys thanks for all of your participation and i hope that you'll be able to have a nice harvest from your garden or continue to have a nice harvest from your garden take care and i'll see you soon let's see melanie says i wanted my third set of carrots i planted my third set of carrots in july and they're already over a foot tall and should be ready in October. Nice. Okay. Um, of course, I said good luck with your harvest. Same to you. And Anwar anyway, says, have a great weekend, everyone. A great week. Okay. So take care. Have fun. Happy gardening.